new lesson for you all but 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 before telling you what are we going to study today we will as usual have a quick tour around swiftland to actually see what is swiftland all about so swiftland it is india's most sincere learning destination wherein we provide the classes for grade 1 to grade 10 You will be getting live interactive classes over here in Swift Learn. That is, you will be connecting with your teachers through audio and video calls, and you will be taking your lessons. Then you have personalized attention batch. So every batch will consist of maximum six students, so that teachers can pay attention to you all. And also, apart from teachers, we have academic mentor team. so that's the team who will be guiding you throughout your course and will be helping you if you come up with any issue then we also cover the syllabus as per your school exam schedule so that you can do very well in your school exams also some of the key features which makes the swift learn all the more special are detailed progress report so what will happen after like uh, one and a half month you will be uh, after every one and a half month you will be getting a kind of progress report that will be including every single thing from your test from your homeworks from your performance in the class every single thing so you will be getting a detailed analysis of what are you doing and what do you need to do more then we have swiftland academic test series in which you can compete with the students and you can see where do you stand and you can work accordingly to improve You can also take unlimited practice tests, which are available on the Swiftland portal, and they will be consisting of two type of tests: subjective and objective. So you can uh, uh, take in both the test and subjective test will further help you to perform in your school exams. And all these things you yourself can see by just booking a very free trial class on Swiftland portal. All you need to do is just go to Play Store, download the Swiftland app. select your grade and there you go you have a free trial class so please do it on priority and please subscribe to the channel of swiftlearn and press the bell icon so that you do not miss on any update of the classes all right so today we are going to study about habitat and adaptation so it's our very first session of habitat and adaptation and the things that we are going to cover in this chapter are habitat then adaptation what is terrestrial and aquatic habitat what are biotic and biotic components and some of terrestrial and aquatic habitat so these are the things that we are going to see now if i tell you to observe your surroundings okay and to tell me about some of the places that we have around our house what is the answer that you will be getting like roads we have parks we have some birds or animals uh we have trees right so this is the thing that we get from our surroundings like we can see from our surroundings now if i tell you that we are living in a village area okay and what are the things that we see around us are these things same as we see in our city area so no there will be some difference right we will be seeing farms more frequently than uh, you know big vehicles then we will be seeing um, the animals okay like cows buffaloes etc so it will be a kind of bit different now different surroundings have different organisms okay so this is what we will be seeing like in city we see cars we see big big vehicles etc but in village area what are the thing that will be commonly seen it will be the uh, animals like cows buffaloes goats etc and then we can also see trees farms big big farms okay uh obviously the dress up will also be a bit different the occupations are different so these are the things these are the common differences that we will be see now there are two type of things that we can find around us first one is the living things and second one is the non living things okay so living things like we uh, animals birds etc and non living things we can have countless of things now what are living things very simple uh the things which require food water and air for survival so they are known as living things like plants uh animals like uh we a human beings so we are all living things why because we need food water and air for our survival 
and the things which do not need any food water air for their survival it is called non living like uh, let's say bottle let's say pen we have laptop we have a uh, door window houses etc so these are non living things all the living organisms be it humans be it animals be it microorganisms they are all known as organisms so all the living things are known as organisms now talking about camel and fish if i tell you what is the basic difference between camel and fish camel we all know it is known as the ship of the desert right so it can survive many many days without water and fish it cannot survive even in a for a minute without water so uh, the basic and the biggest difference is the water thing okay so that camel can survive many days without water but sh ship i'm sorry fish can not even survive for one minute without water now the place where organisms live it is known as its habitat so we are having different type of habitat okay so we just saw the example of fish and camel also so they belong to different habitats so uh, what is the use of habitat the organisms which live in a particular habitat they live, they get their food they get their water shelter and all the other things they need to survive from their habitat so the basic definition which we can give of habitat is the place where organisms live and they get their food water shelter and all the necessary things from the habitat so we have different type of habitats let's say first is aquatic habitat so the habitat which uh, exists inside the water like in seas ocean ponds rivers etc so the habitat over there will be known as aquatic habitat okay so uh, all the lives that exist inside the water they are from aquatic habitat next is terrestrial habitat so terrestrial habitat is which exist on the land and terrestrial where further having many type of habitats like forest grasslands uh, deserts polar okay so these are various type of habitat that we found find on terrestrial now biotic components so all the living things of the habitat they are known as what biotic components okay so if any habitat it consists of living things like animals like plants so these all will be categorized under biotic components and abiotic components it will consist of the non living things of any habitat like soil like mountains like air like water so these are all the non living constituents now can biotic component exist without a biotic component so can we survive without air water no that is not possible so we all need air water to survive and these are a biotic components of any habitat so that proves that the biotic components they for sure need a biotic components to survive in on the earth now i'm very 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 sure that every one of you might have eaten this at some point right so this is a very very healthy thing that is always advised to be eaten so the sprouts which are made up of moong or grams right so what are these these are actually germinated seed okay so whenever seeds they are uh, uh, germinated they turn into sprouts and they are again very healthy now talking about the place so our organisms on the earth they live in every single place okay different organisms they live in different places like it may be very hot climate it may be very cold it may be in water but they are living in different different conditions how are they able to survive that is a question which arises okay so uh, we can say that polar bear it lives in extremely cold conditions so how is it able to survive over, over there so that thing is known as adaptation okay so the organisms what do they do they adjust themselves according to their climate and that thing is known as adaptation तो किसी भी रीजन का जो क्लाइमेट होता है उसके अकॉर्डिंग जो एनिमल्स और लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स खुद को एडजस्ट करते हैं दैट थिंग इज नोन एज अडेप्टन एंड अडेप्टन इट डेक प्लेस इन लाइक 
10 days or 20 days but it takes time and why because the abiotic factors of a region they also change very slowly so like if we talk about polar region so it is cold since very long time talking about desert it is hot since very long time right uh, so uh, the factors change very slowly and therefore the adaptation it also doesn't take place in short time it takes a while now type of adaptation we have structural we have behavioral and we have physiological there are three type of adaptations which are there so structural so structure means body car structure okay so they change the change in that so it refers to special body parts of an organism that helps to survive in its natural habitat like change in color and shape okay so if i talk about chameleon it changes the color right so that becomes the structural adaptation next is physiological adaptation okay so it is related to biochemical reaction so it is a kind of system found in, uh, in in any organism which allows it to perform some of the biochemical reaction okay like the ability to maintain a constant temperature or making a venom next is behavioral so it is uh, um, the kind of change or the kind of things that uh, they adapt in themselves to survive in their natural habitat like we have nocturnal creatures which are you know active at night or some of the animals they take up a certain posture so this is the behavioral adaptation now small changes that take place in the body of an organism over short period to overcome small problems due to changes in surroundings uh, are called acclimatization so what is acclimatization jo thode thode changes hote hain surroundings mein uski wajah se jo organisms khud ko change karte hain adapt karte hain short period ke liye that is known as acclimatization so for long period uh, it is adaptation and for short period it is acclimatization now habitat habitat is our surroundings what we find in ourselves so habitat it provides all the things that we need to live from food from our uh, daily needs etc next is differentiate between terrestrial and aquatic habitat to so terrestrial it is the habitat which is on the land okay it can include desert it can include grasslands it can include uh, polar regions etc and aquatic habitat it is in the seas oceans rivers etc what is the difference between adaptation and acclimatization so we just now saw that adaptation is you know uh, adjusting the body adjusting ourselves for a long period of time in any particular habitat and acclimatization is the adjustment of uh, due to some changes for a very short period of time next is define biotic and abiotic components so biotic components are the living components and abiotic components are the non living components like biotic example we can give as the animals the plants etc and abiotic components are the uh, sunlight water air etc now uh, radha while reading uh, or learning about the characteristics of living organism study that living organisms excrete their waste out of the body she remembered that plants are also living organisms but she wondered how plants excrete their waste she searched on internet and solved her query which component is constituted constituted by the plants so the constituted uh, the component which is the plant is the biotic component all right so the plants they form the biotic component of the habitat or nature and how do plants excrete their waste material so first is they excrete their water by uh, the process of transpiration the gaseous waste they give out by stomata and uh, some of the deciduous plants we have so what do they do all their uh, excess waste material it is passed on to the leaves and then they shed their leaves in a uh, uh, in particular uh, area okay so that is how do they uh, excrete their waste materials and what is value of Ra radha shown here so she is very eager to know she is intelligent and she is aware of what is happening challenge of the day ask where does camel stores hump so camel it stores the uh, where does camel stores water in the hump so there is a misconception that everybody thinks that in hump camel stores water so no in hump camel actually stores the fat 
okay so in hump fat is stored and water it is stored in the blood stream of the camel okay so what does hap uh, what happens is the camel it can uh, drink many gallons of water in one time and that water it is stored in the blood stream but in the hump fat is stored okay so fat is stored in hump and water is stored in the blood stream of camel okay so fun fact wood frogs freeze their body so that is again kind of adaptation or the changes that they can they are capable of kangaroo rats survive without even drinking water so uh, this is again a desert animal kangaroo rats they can even survive without drinking water antarctic fish have antifreeze proteins in their blood so that it doesn't freeze up African bullfrogs create mucus homes to survive the dry regions. So all these animals, they are having some kind of adaptation to um, uh, to make it possible for them to survive in these extreme conditions. Now let's see an activity. The surroundings where organisms survive, flourish, and reproduce, it is known as habitat. Leaves in aquatic plants are reduced in size to minimize their evaporation surface. No, it happens in the desert area. Bending of stem towards sunlight, it is known as phototrophism. And the process of taking in food by organisms, so that is known as nutrition. Factors like food, water, light temperature to which organism responds, so, uh, it is stimuli. The process of removal of waste in plants, it is known as secretion and the process of getting rid of waste, it is known as excretion. Okay, so what are the things that we have learned today? We have learned about habitat, adaptation, terrestrial habitats, what are aquatic habitats. We learned about biotic and abiotic components and some of the terrestrial and aquatic habitats. So I hope these all things are very, very much clear to you. We will be taking this chapter forward in our next session. And till then, you just keep revising, keep learning. And also book your very free trial class on Swift Learn as there are very few slots left. So please hurry up and have the amazing experience of Swift Learn classes. Thank you. Let's meet in the next class.